I don't have any savings. The debt terrifies me, quite frankly. You owe everybody <laughs> money. What? There are weeks and months that I think maybe we're not, we're not gonna make it. I just don't know what to tell you because I don't know where I am, Brad. Help. We are one paycheck away from losing everything. Oh my God. My name is Brad, and I work at a pharmaceutical company. My name is Sharon, and I'm currently unemployed. Between the two of us, we have six children. My daughter is five, and my son is 14. I personally have four children, two in Nova Scotia, two in Toronto. 35% of my income is going to child support. Our financial situation right now is tight. I'm not working, and I'm going back to school in September, so uh, it's about to get even tighter. The majority of my debt comes from credit cards. I like to put everything on the credit card just because I don't want to know what's going on with my account. He doesn't know what's coming in or going out. I sneak out to the driving range. I spend a lot of money at hardware stores and golf stores as well. Your total today, sir, is $339.52. His debt just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. I would say shopping is a definite addiction of mine. Oh, that's cute. When I spend money, I feel Fabulous. Everything is great. Since Sharon's been out of work, uh, she has been shopping, um, and it's been a source of some of our arguments. I purchased a brand new puppy rather impulsively. He's very upset with me about that. Before Sharon and I got together, I just wish that we would have talked more about the financial part. There's a huge amount of resentment for Brad. He watches me spoil my kids, and his kids just don't have that. We fought almost daily about the money, to the point that uh, we actually separated for a bit. I kicked him out of the house. We managed to work it out, but that's when we decided we were no longer going to share our finances. We came up with this plan that we would divide everything 50-50, including the mortgage, property taxes, groceries, everything. I feel frustrated about Brad's debt. It's causing a lot of stress and animosity in our relationship. My greatest fear right now is that Sharon and I won't be together if things continue to snowball, and that'll be a sad state for the whole family. If things don't get better financially, there's a huge possibility that it could be the end of our relationship. This month, I'll help this couple move from red to black. I've been solving money problems for over 20 years, tackling everything from high finance to low income. I help people understand money and debt, which is still a huge mystery for most folks. And it's the number one reason couples split up. So now I'm making house calls. Sharon and Brad started out together on the wrong foot. They're trying to make a go of it without ever talking about their money. They're full of good intentions, but with six children to consider, there is a lot at stake. Lots of people jump into relationships before they have the talk about money, and then it comes back to bite them. Hi, Hello. Gail Vaz Oxlade. I'm Brad. Nice to meet you. Sharon. If you don't mind, the first thing I'd like to do is drop my bag and have a quick look around. It's very neat. I like it tidy. Do you like your money tidy too? I would like it to be tidy. Do you eat out much? All the time. So much for that as a plan. It's not a fancy house. It's simple. They have some nice stuff, but nothing to go broke over. This would not be a lot of clothes if these were all the clothes Sharon had, but they're not. They're just the ones currently on display. <laughs> Brad? Yes? I'm going into the garage because I hear it's full of stuff, and I can hardly wait to see all the toys you have stuck in there. Brad has five sets of clubs. One, two, three, four, five. You've already split up once over this. Mm -hmm. You hit the wall so badly, you decided to actually separate the money. But because you've committed to each other, really it's both your problem. I have no problem with helping him pay down his debt, which I've made very clear, as long as he stops incurring more. Now, she seems like the paragon of virtue here. Does she have any debt? Yes. How much debt does she have? I think maybe 5,000. You mean you have been through all of this? And you still don't know anything about her, financially? Why didn't you talk about this before you did the hookup? Love is blind. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Apparently love is stupid too. <laughs> I need you to promise me that you're gonna do whatever it takes to get through this whole process. We promise. I promise. If you do all the things that I ask over the next few weeks, complete the challenges, have the right attitude, and I'll give you up to $5,000 to help you pay down your debt. Let's go look at the numbers and we'll see just how bad things are. You ready for some shock and some horror? $57,000 in debt! I just felt uh, like I was gonna pass out. It was, it was shocking, I had no clue. While well, he owes the majority $40,000, you, madame, are not without a flaw. Yeah. You owe $14,500. You owe everybody <laughs> money. You owe on a consolidation loan, property tax, student loans, family, your accountant, four credit cards, your dentist. You have a credit card with a balance of almost $15,000 on it at 28%, on which you are paying $93 a month. That doesn't even cover your interest. He has no idea what goes in and out of his account. Because you so, don't care? No, I, I care. I just, I get, I get sick by it. Have you not done the math? Yes, he did. So he got another credit card with a lower interest rate. Right. And transferred, transferred the, balance. the balance. And then jacked that credit card back up again. I'm not afraid of the $40,000 in debt. I know that together we can get that paid off. What I'm afraid of is that he's going to continue this behavior. It's just going to keep going and going and going. And look at what you have been spending on average. <laughs> oh, my God. $400 on cell phones? Really? You're spending almost $1,000 on groceries and personal care and another $700 in restaurants. $1,700 going in your mouth. How much are you spending in cash? I rarely ever I don't take use cash. cash. I don't. Every month you're spending $4,285 in cash. What? No. How can that be? 3600 of it is in cash advances. For what? Cash advance on your credit card? I don't remember ever doing that, but... What? You notice there's no housing in here yet? There's no transportation in here yet? No debt repayment, no savings? Not even a penny? For the future, you're overspending every month by $8,000, and you're headed to $1.2 million in debt. Do you really think that your relationship would survive a $1.2 million yeah. debt? No. You have to give up the credit cards. You've proven that no matter what you do, you can't stop using them. You're going to give them to me. They're going bye-bye. What is your freaking problem? I don't know. You people are in deep shit if you don't get this stuff together. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Between them, Sharon and Brad have six kids and nearly $60,000 of debt. Why are you still hanging on to a credit card at 28% when you're this far in debt? Sharon is unemployed. As a couple, they're not working together in their finances. I just wish Brad could get his head out of the sand and pay attention. My biggest weakness is not knowing where the money is. They're at the breaking point. Unless they get on the same page, this blended family could shatter. For the next month, this couple will learn to live on a strict cash budget. No more credit cards. They'll complete weekly challenges to tackle their money and relationship issues. And if they're willing to change, I will reward them with thousands of dollars to pay down their debt. No changes, no money. Give me those cards. So we're going to do things differently on this go round. Okay. I'm not giving you guys jars. Because of the way you manage your money, it's ours, hers, and his, you'd need 15 jars. So let's start at the very beginning. If you knew then what you know now about each other, would you have hooked up? Would I have signed up for the debt? No. We are one paycheck away from losing everything. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. No plan, no communication, no what if, stupid as a bag of hammers. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for, for months now. Time to stop thinking and start moving. 
Before I gave them their first challenge, I asked Sharon and Brad to consider five very important questions every couple should talk about before they move in together. What assets do you own? What liabilities do you have? How will we manage the day-to-day -day finances? What financial goals are important to us? How will we deal with a worst-case scenario? This is the conversation they should have had before hooking up. This is a life lesson challenge. I'm gonna give you a pile of money. Not real money. Huh. This pile of money represents your income for a month. Because Sharon and Brad decided to keep their finances separate, for this challenge, they'll use my Gale dollars to come up with three budgets. A Brad budget, a Sharon budget, and a joint household budget. They also have to plan to become debt-free in three years. I'm gonna need some help from Sharon because I'm not uh, the best with money. I'm really looking forward to communicating with Brad about finances. I got my budget, I'm All set. Right. Do you want to start with the home stuff? Sure. The main one is the mortgage right now, right? Yep. 770, banking fees, I put in $30. I need to do something about that. That adds up. Education, $50. Your kids aren't going very far. Clothes. Why don't you just throw your whole pile in there? $100. You're gonna end up spending more, and you know that. Nope. When it comes to money and bills, I just didn't want to deal with anything. This has opened my eyes huge to uh, the idea that, you know what, I can, I can handle this. Hey, what do we got next? Debt repayment. On my budget, I have $750 for debt repayment. People sometimes use the minimum payment on their debt when putting together a budget. But doing it that way means they'll be in debt a really long time. You're only going to use $40 to golf. I'm going to cut back. That's unrealistic. Don't forget about child support. Oh, geez. It's your biggest one. OK, so there goes my pile. I am officially out of money. I'm a little concerned about your savings. That's not 10%. No, I don't, I don't have 10%. Maybe if you took it from your golf fund. Maybe I could take some out of your clothes. I'm taking that'd... my clothes. Did you find the experience interesting working with the piles of money? Yeah, definitely. Did it make it more concrete for you in particular? It did, absolutely, sure. Okay, so how are things going with you guys? It was a tough week. <laughs> Little birdie told me you stepped on the couch last night. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened? Well, it was kind of a scramble last minute to finish the budget, and it got put on my um, plate, which is, you know, I'm not working, so. Oh, hold on a second. You had a whole freaking weekend off. You couldn't find the time it took to no, do a budget it. on a weekend? Then why wasn't it finished? It, it, was it wasn't finished. finished. It didn't balance. Honey, there was like $300. So he makes a budget that doesn't balance and you clean it up? Mm -hmm. Why did you clean up his freaking mess? Why did you not send me his unbalanced budget? I don't know. Well, I, figure it out. I always feel like I need to take control of the situation and make sure it gets done. And he's counting on that. I do appreciate her. Don't tell me. <laughs> I do appreciate you. I don't say it enough. OK, so the last question to ask about the whole budgeting thing is, do you want to live on the jars? Yes. Yeah. Sharon and Brad created budgets they can live with. Now they're ready for the jars and beginning to live solely on cash. No more credit. Want to hear what your next challenge is? Yes. I'm not telling you. You're serious? You can, you can at least tell me what I have to wear. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know what to wear. I hate not knowing what the next challenge is going to be. What I will tell you is that it is a relationship rescue challenge. And if you guys don't learn to communicate, your relationship will go up in smoke. Coming up. I just don't know what to tell you because I don't know where I am, Brad. Oh, God. Help! Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Brad spends money he just doesn't have. Brad currently has 15 pairs of golf shoes. He's got five different sets of clubs. Sharon isn't much better at managing her money. Sharon is a 100% uh, impulse shopper. Mostly clothes, 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 clothes. $57,000 in debt! Their finances were in such poor shape, this blended family was headed for disaster. For their first challenge, I had them balance their budgets and begin to get their family finances in order. Now they have to figure out a way to work together as a team. So this week, I've set them up with a fiery challenge. Today, you guys are going to be firefighters. Together, you're going to work on communication. You're going to go into the smoky building with a blacked out mask, and you're going to find the victim. When we go into a smoking building, you rely on your partner. We have tape across here. This is going to aid in the communication. 
because you guys aren't going to be able to see when you're in there. So you're going to have to help each other. I feel blind. If Sharon and Brad don't learn to communicate better, their financial future will go up in flames. This is the victim that we're going to place inside of the burn tower. So Sharon, are you ready to lead Brad through? I am. Talk to me. I don't know. I don't know where we should look. You got to check every room, sweetie. I can't get around that. Where are you? I'm Talk right to here. Me. Where are you going? I'm, you're supposed to be reading I mean, me. I, I just don't know what to tell you because I don't know where I am, Brad. Okay. I can't see okay. anything. Oh, God. We're going to run out of air. Oh. <laughs> I felt like I wanted to take control, and it was difficult to hold back. So this is the first time that I'm ready to take charge. I found them. Great. Let's get out of here. 1018, so not bad whatsoever. Brad, you're going to lead Sharon. There's a room on the left. Yeah. Not in there. Go straight, and then we're going to make a right. And there should be another room straight ahead. I think we did a good job, given the circumstance. It was difficult to find your way through, but we managed to do it. I got it, Sharon. You do? Yeah. So four minutes and nine seconds. Working as a team, I thought we did a really good job. I think it's funny that you were the one that was in control, whereas usually it's me. So I'm here to make notes about your last challenge. You couldn't find the body. <laughs> Put you in charge and the poor person would die. <laughs> Thank God we have big, strong Brad over here to take control. He can communicate. Did he surprise you? Definitely. Yeah. I had no idea how bad our communication was. Relationship rescued? Yes. We've been making like a conscious effort now. Are you managing to live on the jars OK? Money in the jars still. Money in the jars. That's very good, because it plays right into what's going to happen next. So this week, you have a future plan challenge. Something bad is going to happen this week. So I'm taking half your jar money this week. You're also going to be faced with a medical emergency. Oh. You won't be able to do anything for the next week. You are going to be in charge of doing everything that Sharon normally does for an entire week, because if something were to happen to her, this would be your job, and it's about time you tasted it. Okay. Here is the super de duper test for Sharon. You are completely out of control. Right. And before I go, you're gonna need these. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Thank you. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Brad and Sharon's second chance at love is married in $57,000 of consumer debt. Do I really need another golf club? Probably not, but it makes me feel good. They didn't talk about the money before blending their families, and Brad's financial foolishness was driving a wedge between them. We had conversation about the kids, but did we have a conversation about the financials? No. I challenged them to work together. Now I'm testing them to see how they handle a real financial emergency by taking away half their jar money for the week. If they complete all my challenges, I'll give them up to $5,000 to pay down their debt. This week, Brad has to step up and run the household while Sharon deals with a simulated medical emergency and is laid up in a cast and sling. This week's been very challenging. I didn't realize how much work's involved with all the laundry, the cooking, and the cleaning. I've earned my money this week for sure. Brad has taken care of everything. He's driven the kids around. He has cleaned the house. You name it, he's done it this week. I got her breakfast in bed this morning. I made French toast. I thought it was a great thing. There's Sharon's breakfast for this morning. This stuff has been a little bit of a challenge for me. It's hard to get around a broken arm and a broken leg and crutches. What are you doing? Paying bills. It's great to know that if if something did happen to me, he's there to pick up where I left off and make sure that everything gets taken care of. It's really taught me a lot. I'll continue with this for sure. It's helping our relationship. If I'm doing more, she's happier, she's happier, then I'm happier. How constraining was it? It was awful, not being able to just take over. Take over, and that just pretty well sums you up. Yep. Yeah. How hard was it to live on half the jar money? <sighs> Unbelievable. It was tough. And so, you see, that's really why you need buffers in your budget. Did she learn anything this month? She's not as controlling. What did he learn this month? To pay attention. Is he better organized? He's totally on track now. Not sleeping on the couch anymore? No couch. <laughs> the thing that I'm most pleased with is the whole communication thing. You learn how to make budgets. You learn that bad things can happen to good people. You don't plan for an emergency. And you learn that if you have each other's backs, 
you can accomplish just about anything you want. You are always spending about $8,000 a month and heading to about $1.2 million worth of debt. Not doing that, right? No. If Sharon and Brad follow my debt repayment plan of $1,600 a month, they'll be consumer debt free in three years. So, how do you think you did on a scale of one to 10? Nine. I think I did too. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> it's hard to live up to her expectations, isn't it? It's unbelievable. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I don't know if I'm gonna make it living up to your expectations. How'd I do? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Here's your $5,000. You Thank worked you. hard, you deserve it. This is just the beginning for us. I think it's really helped our relationship because it's shown us that we can work well together towards a common goal. I just think this will change our lives forever. That's not all. There is a major amusement park that you guys would probably like to go to, and we're gonna cover the cost for the whole day, including the food, so that you can take the four kids and have a great time. Oh, that's awesome. You want to cry now? You're going to cry for me, Brad. Come here, you big old sop. This whole process has been eye-opening on many levels. I can tell you right now without even looking when my bills are coming out. And I couldn't do that a month ago. I'm going to use the word life-changing. So it's, it's, it's amazing.